Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So by looking at this image, you might be thinking that I'm going to talk about Canon and that's not the case. This is actually a potential meter, which is something that we're going to learn in the video. And today we're going to look into chapter 11 of A-Level Physics, Practical Applications of Electrical Circuits. And before that, I just want to remind you that you can always subscribe to this channel so that I can reach out to more people. Thank you so much. And this is the chapter. Out. In the last video, we talked a lot about resistance and today we're going to talk about internal resistance. It is the inherent opposition to the flow of current within a power source. It can be a power supply, it can be a battery. Studying internal resistance is important because sometimes it can affect the efficiency of electrical. So what contributes to internal resistance can be the wires and connections, can also be the chemical reactions and materials from the battery. And heating effects can sometimes contribute to internal resistance as well, especially when electrical energy is being converted into thermal energy. So this is what we learned in chapter nine. We learned that the total potential difference across multiple component is equal to the potential difference across the power supply. And before we learn internal resistance, this is what we might think because we only have one component, then V should be equal to E. And what we didn't learn before is the concept of internal resistance, which is the resistance within the cell. So to help you visualize better, I draw a resistor symbol here, but it is actually not there in the circuit. It's just there to help you calculate better. So after putting internal resistance into account, the new formula should be this. The voltage here plus the voltage across the power source is equal to the EMF. And because V equal to IR, we can also break down the formula into IR plus IR. And the lowercase r here represent the internal resistance of the power source. One thing that you need to understand is the concept of terminal potential difference. The way I see it is like the leftover potential difference after deducting the voltage contributed to the internal resistance. Now let's solve a work example to help you understand how we can include internal resistance into the calculation. Say I have a six volt battery connected to a four ohm resistor and the current is 1.2. What we need to do is calculate the internal resistance. So we can use the formula here, just plug in all the values that you got, current, voltage, resistance, and we can find out the internal resistance by just calculating the value of R in this equation. And that's how you do it. So a little bit of common sense, maximum current can be drawn when the circuit does not have any external resistance. And because of that, you can see that I will be maximum five ampere. And one thing that you also need to know is that terminal potential difference, like the leftover voltage, will be very high if the external resistance is way, way higher than the internal resistance. So this is what I, I have an extreme example here. This resistance here is 1998. This on internal is only two. So if you apply the equation to find the current, you would have found the current 0 0.005. And then when you multiply the current with the resistance, you'll find out that the potential difference here is 9.99, which is extremely close to the EMF of the cell. So this is what you can conclude. The higher the external resistance, the higher the terminal PD will be. Now let's look into one network example to help you understand better. Say I have a potential divider and I have two resistor of the same resistance. And guess what the voltage here will be? You would, might have already gotten the answer, which is 10 volt because the resistance is the same. What well, things got a bit different when the resistance are different. So for R2, it has 30 ohm, R1, 10 ohm, three times more than R1. And as a result, the voltage across R2 is also three times more than R1. So essentially it's ratio. The higher the resistance, the higher the voltage. Now let's solve another question. Say I have a resistor, I have 25 ohm here, 15 ohm here. What should be the output voltage here? And because I'm finding the output voltage of this 15 ohm resistor, I'll just put 15 on top of this divided by the sum of resistance multiplied by the input voltage and I would have gotten the output voltage of this resistor, which is pretty simple. That's how you can use the formula. So sometimes people also put variable resistor into this potential divider. It's very convenient to just change the resistance. And when you change the resistance here, the voltage will also be changed. Now let's look into how LDR and thermistor can be used as sensor in a potential divider circuit. As we learned in the last video, LDR is a type of resistor in which the resistance depends on the presence of like. Say when there is a presence of like, we learn that the resistance decreases because electrons are somehow triggered to move. When you have low resistance here, voltage will also be low according to the potential divider equation. And if let's say you switch off the like, the voltage 
will increase because the resistance increases. So that's how LDR can be used as a sensor. When the resistance change, the current will also change to switch on some of the components. So same goes to thermistor, especially negative temperature coefficient. It's resistance will decrease when temperature increases. And this exponential decrease in resistance is due to the semiconductor material in the NTC releasing more electrons. So when temperature increases, release more electrons, therefore more current flow and resistance decreases. So using NTC in a potential divider can also be useful. So for example, in a high temperature environment, the resistance is very low and therefore voltage change here. And as con in contrast, when the temperature is very low, the resistance is high, the voltage is also high. All right, but you can customize the circuit to do whatever you want. But what I'm trying to bring out here is that when using thermistor and LDR in a potential divider, you can essentially voltage value across each resistance. Now let's look into the last part of the chapter called the potential meter. It is a three terminal variable resistor that allow you to manually adjust voltage. So this is the potential meter setup. We have a driver cell with a known voltage. We also have a test cell. So what we try to do is that we want to measure the voltage of the test cell without a voltmeter. And then we have a sensitive galvanometer and a jockey movable contact. So the goal again, I said, we have to calculate the voltage of the test cell without using a voltmeter. And the reason behind that is that we want to measure the EMF without drawing any current from the test cell because current flow can affect voltage due to internal resistance. So to do that, we need to achieve something called the now condition. And I have two conditions here that show you the opposite of now condition. So I will move the jockey and you can see that the galvanometer is moving. And that's because there's a difference between the EMF here. Well, how do we calculate the voltage of the test cell without drawing any current? Something that we need to achieve is called the now condition. It is achieved when the voltage drop across the wire matches the EMF of the test cell. So this is not a now condition because the galvanometer is still moving. This is also not a now condition where a now condition will look like this. When I put the jockey at the right spot to a point where galvanometer is no longer moving. And it means the voltage drop across the wire matches the EMF of the test cell. So once the now condition is achieved, we can then calculate the voltage of this cell using this equation. AX is the point which the jockey touches and AB is the length of the wire. And in this case, I say that the resistance of the wire connecting here is typically neglected. We don't care about it first. Now here's a work example. Say the now condition is achieved when I put the jockey at the six meter mark. Well, this is why I can I'll put the value of six here divided by 10, which is the total length multiplied by the input voltage. And that will give me the EMF of this cell. Well, the advantages is that it's more accurate than using a standard voltmeter because no current is drawn. That means we don't have to go through internal resistance and it is often used in the lab to measure small voltages and calibrate equipment. And the limitation of it is that the EMF supplied to the potential wire by the driver cell, sometimes they are not accurate because there is internal resistance within this cell. So instead of putting one test cell, the solution is to put two test cells with the value of one of the test cells known. So let me give you a, an example. So to compare the EMF of two cells, let's say the EMF here is known. I want to calculate this. What I can do is that I can simply connect them into two different points where the galvanometer stop moving, stop deflecting, and then just look at the length. We know that resistance is proportional to the length of the wire. So this is why I can use this equation to calculate the EMF of this cell based on where they are in contact in the line. And that's pretty much it on potential meter and the end of this chapter. I shall see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.